praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Welcome tonight to another episode of Real Life Issue, Real Life Discussion. Women of one. It is my prayer that Lord I will open our understanding. This evening, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you this evening. Give you all the praise and all the glory for who you are. We want to thank you for all you did for us yesterday. So you behold the glory. Amen. So you behold the honor. So you be all the adoration. Amen. Father, we thank you for lives that were changed. Thank, thank you for destinies that were transformed. Thank, thank you for the lives that you see. So be exalted. Amen. I want to thank you for the privilege to see the last Sunday in the first half of the year 2021. The last Sunday in the month of June, the last Sunday in the second quarter. It is not everybody that started this year together that we started this year together that we are alive today. Oh, your mercy has kept us, your mercy has preserved us. Daddy, we are grateful. And we are here tonight to learn at your feet again. I want to say thank you for what you did in our different places of worship this morning. We say be exalted in Jesus' name. Tonight we commit everything we want to do into your hands. Come and have your way, come and take your place, come and do that which only you can do. Pray you will walk the person that will present, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and the knowledge for which you want to impart us. Lord, you will help him, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And you grant us the grace to be due as of that which we have been taught in the mighty name of Jesus. That your purpose and your plan for us to be in good health might be established in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Father. We give you all the in Jesus. Nineteen name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So I welcome each and every one of us once again. I say, um, I don't know how to say it in English, but for, the, for mm -hmm. those of, for those of us that were there, Ekwano. Uh -huh. well, so I have my guest today that will be talking to us on our topic for today, Mr. Victor Abu, a registered nurse, a certified I hope the noise is not from your hand, Mr. Victor. He's a registered nurse. He's a, a charter project manager, a certified facility manager, and a dietitian. Also, is an associate of Global Institute of Project Management. Um, and I'll quickly go through his, uh, a little of his profile. He's a very long profile. Well, I've asked with his permission to just read a few so that at least it will save our time. He's known as Victor, Mr. Victor Abu, also known as Victor de Concoro. He's a renowned music minister, gospel artist, and of course, a registered nutritionist, nutrition facilitator, nutrition consultant, ex manager, certified chartered. Certified dietitian, chartered project manager, like I said, health coach, music director at Dunamis International Gospel Center, a songwriter, a recording artist, a pianist, a music instructor, and vocal coach. He hear from Ola Maboro, local government area of Kogi State. With his permission, I will just stop there. So join me to welcome Mr. Victor Abu, also known as Victor the Conqueror. 
you are welcome. You can sh show your face now so that at least we can see your face. You see your face on the flyer and you are seeing your picture as well right now. But now you are live, so let's see your face. You have the floor now. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Yes. So we can hear you faintly. You can hear your voice better. Okay. Can you hear me, please? Yes. We can hear you, but not so loud. Okay. How about now? Can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you. Okay. So, uh, good useless. evening. Good evening. Just a suggestion. If you are using your system, your laptop, maybe you can yeah. just speak directly without using the earphone so that at least we can hear you very well. Okay. Uh, yes. I think that would be better. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, so um, just like you have uh, rightly introduced, uh, my name is Mr. Victor. I'm a registered nutritionist and a dietitian. So I, I'll be talking briefly. She has already done most of the introduction. Sorry for the background of the light. Uh, my light is having a bit of a problem now. I, I, I've been having lots of programs, so I, I didn't take note of that. So um, please pardon, pardon me, I will soon share the screen. So I'm a health manager. I consult for many healthcare organizations, including lawsuits, I think, and others. So uh, today, uh, what is very, very most important uh, regarding to uh, the meeting today, we'll be talking on dead food. Um, if you permit me, I will just proceed with with the lecture for today. Yes. So we'll be talking on, on dead foods. We'll be talking on dead food. The, the enemy, I don't know if we can all see the screen now. Yes, please, we can see it. We can see it. Okay. So we'll be talking on dead food, the enemy of healthy living. Uh, you would all note that the, the issue we are having currently now is not the issue of HIV. It's not the issue of AIDS. It's not the, it's not a, it's not the issue of tuberculosis. Most of the issues we are having currently now are mostly related to food. Myself, I handle a lot of people that are having diabetes, that are having high blood pressure. In fact, lots of people who are having overweight, people who need, uh, who need to work on their tummy, issues of, of uh, maybe big tummy, and a, a whole lot of health issues including those who are having stroke and the rest. So all this has results from dead food. I know most of the time we'll be like asking ourselves, uh, what is dead food? What is, uh, what is dead food all about? So that is one of the major things we want to consider today. We want to, we want to look at dead food. We want to understand what dead food is all about. We want to also understand the impact and the danger of dead foods to health and well-being. Also, we want to look at, to, to also understand favorable alternatives and healthy eating lifestyle. To not only say it, uh, the issues we're having these days is mostly related to metabolic disease conditions. Hello, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, so the, the issues we are having these days is mostly related to metabolic disease condition. Now, when we are talking, when we are talking about metabolic disease condition, we're talking about diabetes, we're talking about arthritis, when someone is feeling pains, knee pains, body pains, they're about, we're talking about high body fat, and we're also talking about overweight and obesity, stroke. Now, worldwide, it has been recorded that heart disease is the number one killer disease worldwide. And it, has also, it, it, has, it is also clear that diabetes in Nigeria alone, over 5 million people are having diabetes in Nigeria, not to talk about the world. Then, yearly, 1.5 million people are being diagnosed of 
either diabetes or high blood cholesterol or high blood pressure on a yearly basis. We can't count the number of dead that has been recorded as a result of this. And all this is as a result of dead food. The, the last, uh, last week, Thursday, I was at last week, I was telling them some of these things. Some of the dead foods we eat unknowing, like fried foods, we are not aware. These are some of the food that cost off lifespan. Now, no, normally, uh, previously, before this time, uh, our parents live up to 120 years, some live up to uh, 100 years and above. But now, people can hardly or barely live up to 70, 80 years. All this is as a result of dead foods. Now, most of the, most of the, the, the frozen foods we eat, there's a chemical that has been infused and it's called formalin. This formalin is the same chemical that is being used to preserve uh, dead people in the mortuary. And no wonder most of these frozen foods, they can stay for one year, two years, even without deteriorating, as long as you, you, you keep them in the fridge. This is this chemical, and this is the same food we are eating. I'm, I'm very sure most of us are conversing with genetic modified food, where they use certain DNAs of, of certain food, uh, organism to grow food. So, in fact, recently, I, I was also sharing with them at last week on Thursday, that is the Lagos State University Hospital, because I also consult for, for them, that recently they, 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 they caught a, a set of traders. And then that is those who were uh, selling uh, fufu. They were asking them, because the, the, uh, it was discovered that they usually put certain chemicals like detergents and hypo into fufu. So they were asking them, why, why are they putting this? So the, the answer they gave was um, because they want, to, they want it to rise quickly and they want it to ferment quickly. And they don't even care about the impact on the health of the people. So we are surrounded with dead food everywhere. Even some of the palm oil we, we take some of these days, the palm oil are really are, are bad, they're totally bad, totally out of place. Looking at the fact that most of this palm oil have been mixed and then these are some of the food we, most of the time, when you want to cook soup, you use it. This, the same applies to certain um, other processes we buy here and there. So we're going to get to know more about this and then the impact of it. Now, let us look at the primitive nutrition versus modern age nutrition. That is where we are going to start with. Now, if you look at the primitive Nutrition. When we're talking about primitive nutrition, we're talking about the nutrition of our forefathers, of our parents. That is what we're talking about. The nutrition of our forefathers, of our parents. How did they eat? What are the kind of food they eat compared to the modern age nutrition? Now, if you look at the primitive nutrition, it involves intake of fresh fruits and vegetables. Most of our parents, they go to the garden, to get maybe uh, ogu leaf or uh, maybe a leaf or leaf or any bitter leaf. These are the kind of foods they eat more of the time. Fresh fruits. They take more of natural foods. Natural foods here. Yeah, well, their foods are free of chemicals and additives. And then they are not fermented. Everything is made freshly. But if you come to modern age nutrition, you notice that we are surrounded with all lot of germs including junks, processed and refined food, even the summer, the, the, the summer vita most of us eat. These are processed food, white rice and, and thereabouts. And then sugary foods, drinks, alcohol, tobaccos, all this is the modern age nutrition compared to the olden days or the primitive nutrition. So now let us compare the health status of the modern days nutrition compared to the primitive nutrition. If you notice um, our forefathers, you notice these people, they live long. They live up to old age. Some of them live up to 120 years and they are free of this disease we are having these days, diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke and, and they are about obesity. Because most of them, the kind of lifestyle they live are, are even healthy lifestyle. Some of them trek from their houses to the farm 
it's not like these days where there's more sedentary lifestyle. People just, uh, when they come to their office, they just sit on their laptop and that is all. They don't even have time to go to the gym or to even do a, a bit of exercise in the day. But these people, they, they, they live up to long, um, up to maybe 120 years, 100 years. Even my great-grandmother, I remember my great-grandmother died at around 120 years. She lived very long. And then if you talk about the health status of modern age nutrition, we, we see people die before their time. People, people can, people, in fact, you will see somebody of, of, um, of 30 years looking like a 50 years old. People age quickly. Somebody that is at, um, at 50 will be looking as though he's, he's 30. Somebody that is 30 years will be looking like, like, looking like maybe 80 or 90. So that is the issue we have. And then we have a lot of issues like heart disease, cancer. Um, I'm sure most of us know that uh, breast cancer, prostate cancer, they are on the increase. I have a lot of people meeting me that I'm having cancer of the breast. I'm having prostate cancer. All this is as a result of dead foods and modern age nutrition, where you have shawamas everywhere, you have pizzas everywhere, you have cookies, candies everywhere. And then this is it. And then... If you look at comparing healthy and a, a healthy person versus unhealthy, then you can be able to see that most of these people who are healthy, they eat more of organic foods compared to unhealthy people that eat more of junks. Awesome. Right? So you need to start asking yourself, what kind of swallow do, do I take? Do I take more of starchy swallows? Some of you, you might still be taking stuff like Semovita, Gari, Aku, Pandediam. This, I, I, I didn't say they are bad, but because they are starchy with time, they can cause health issues. Why? There are, there are other alternatives you can switch off, organic alternatives like on red plantain, oat swallows, cabbage swallows, cauliflower swallows. Uh, we have tiger nut swallow that just even came out. We have potato swallow and the, some of these organic foods. There are even alternatives for rice, like some of us that love taking rice. There, there's burger. There's quinoa, there's couscous, there's asha. I'm going to be showing us as we proceed. Now, they're, they're, now there are proven facts we need to know about this, about dead food. Now, according to the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation in 2016, poor diet is the second highest risk factor for early death. You know, I explained that earlier. That is what I'm talking about. The second cost of early death is poor diet. Now, also, poor diet is a major factor that is responsible in one five dead globally, according to the new research we reviewed. Now, 11 million people died worldwide in 2017 as a result of poor diet. And when we're talking about poor diet, we're talking about dead food. And it is mostly as a result of cardiovascular diseases like high blood pressure, like stroke, high blood cholesterol, and the rest of Cancer I mentioned earlier, then dead worldwide. What are you taking food that I have no like? If some of us, if you review the food you eat, yeah, okay, we'll be expecting him back. So, um, okay, I'm coming back already. Thank God. Can't wait to see the alternatives. <laughs> <laughs> hey, God, I'm listening. Well, no. Mm -hmm. You remove some more, you remove Gary and Fufu. Wait till I know, me. right? <laughs> when Gary and Fufu is gone. I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. 
<laughs> Having gone through this, I was like, what else am I going to be eating? Oh, God, I, I know I, I do oats for food and um, plantain, plantain for food, but I'd like to see more. We can hear more. That would be lovely. Um, I think it's back, but it's muted. You want to unmute him? Unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you still hear me, please? Yes, we yes, can we hear can. you. Can see this oh, Welcome back. Network. Sorry yeah, for yeah. that. So um, just to continue, 20% of dead worldwide is as a result of dead food. Please, this dead food we are talking about is not very really far from us. There are some of the foods we eat every day. Like some of these burgers, shawarma, cookies. I, I, I mentioned earlier, some of you that buy some of these frozen chicken, it's also a dead food. I explained of the formalin has been used for, for preserving dead body, that has been still used to preserve the formalin. And uh, you know, most of these uh, processed foods, they have um, preservatives made of sodium benzoate and the rest. This, all these things actually contribute to a whole lot. You know, the, the main mention of cardiovascular disease. When we're talking about cardiovascular diseases, it's linked to heart disease, like hi hypertension, we are talking about high blood pressure, we are talking about high blood cholesterol, we are talking about stroke, we are talking about CAD, coronary artery disease, whereby yeah, there's, there's no free flow. There's no free flow of um, when, when it has to do with nutrient or blood or to the body because you have consumed too much of fatty food that have blocked your arteries and your veins and that prevents a free flow of nutrient and oxygenated blood. <laughs> So then also poor diet is the cost of most metabolic disease. I've explained that like the obesity, hypertension, diabetes, high blood cholesterol. And like I said, I've been managing, managing a lot of people with all this and it's as a result of dead food. Even World Health Organization confirmed this in, in 2002. So the, the next aspect, the next, Okay, so now the, the, the next aspect is relating to the cost of high death weight by this, um, this shows um, the, the major cause of death. I mean, when, it, when we're talking about high, uh, high death weight, what is the major cause? the kind of food you have been eating. Also, maybe it could be as a result of the kind of lifestyle we, we live. Some of us, we don't have time to do work at all. Mm. We don't have time to go to the... Even in the morning, you just wake up in the morning, you, you take your bath, you go to work. You don't create any time for any workouts. That can lead to some of these diseases we're talking about. Because you need to, as you're consuming this food, you need to burn out excess calories excess fat out of the body. For instance, a man, as a man, you're not supposed to have more than 18 to 25% of fat in your body. Then as a woman, you're not supposed to have more than 25 to 31% of fat. Anything above 33% is actually too much. Mm. Then we talk about due to family history, some of us inherit some of this from our parents. So at least the, the graph is very easy to understand. We also have as a result of maybe poverty, which can also cost. So another, another um, aspect I need to talk about, what you should know. I think I should also use my slides so that it's much easier to navigate. Okay, I am. This is much better now. Uh -huh. So uh, what, what should you, what we should also know about poor diet? Poor diet is, is an equal opportunity killer. Uh, like I've explained earlier, 72% of known communicable diseases all result from poor diet worldwide. Then we, are, we also have this graph to also show that 
what diet is the second leading cause of death that is poor diet the second leading cause of death globally you can see on the graph after high systolic blood pressure we have diets so i, I think you're not sharing your 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 uh, powerpoint you're about, yeah you're still sharing the uh pdf I can hear you clearly. Oh. Yeah, you're still sharing Hello, your you PDF. Said... We can we cannot see the graph huh? you're talking about. We cannot see the graph okay, you're talking okay. about. Okay. Can you see now? No, you might need to share your screen instead of uh, application. What about, can you see now? No, we are still seeing the PDF. We are seeing the PDF. Can I, can I go ahead? Yeah, you can go ahead if you can't uh, get it. Okay. So, so this is a graph that shows, um, what we're talking about regarding to, to poor diets. So diet is the second leading cause of death globally from these statistics that has been shared here. And then it is very important we also note this as well. So um, I'm going to also talk on So these are, these are popular quotes uh, from some of these uh, popular uh, artists, uh, some of these popular superstars. So when you take junk food drags you down, now uh, that is by Merida Lambert, then this one says, everyone will be healthy if they don't eat junk food. Now, what are dead foods? That is very, very important. So I've been talking all this while on dead food. You need to know what dead food is all about. Now, dead foods are food that contains very little or no nutrients due to their refining and processing. That is, they have very little or no nutrients at all. Like I've been explaining, some of the foods we have been eating these days, um, I must tell you the truth, most of them, they, they, they have little nutrients, especially foods that are refined. That is why we, we do advise people to go for foods that are rich in fiber and foods that are organic. Now, dead foods are toxic foods or carcinogenic foods that influence our health negatively. They are very harmful to our body system. Now, dead foods are, are foods capable of causing different kinds of diseases, ranging from cancer, heart diseases, diabetes, metabolic uh, disorder, including obesity. Uh, I've been talking, I've been mentioning this over and over, arthritis, high blood pressure, and many others. So these are part of what you need to know about dead food. Now, you can see types of dead food over here. We have processed and refined food. So I think it's getting much clearer over here now. We're talking about dead food. We have processed food and refined food. Like you can see, the picture is showing it clear, like the pizzas, the shawarma, the cookies, the burger, donuts, egg rolls, all these, they are all processed food, uh, white chocolate. So by the time you keep on eating most of all these foods, you are cutting your lifespan very short. You know, I, I told us earlier that the life expectancy rate for, Nigeria, for Nigerians now is now 55 years, which is very, very poor. When countries like Hong Kong and the rest, they, 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 their life expectancy will be still up to 80, 100. And even countries like India, they are still living well. But coming to Nigeria, most of these countries, they ship all this dead food to us and we patronize it. Now, other example, we have fast foods. All these fast foods we, we buy here and there and unhealthy snacks, like um, the donuts, the meat pie, the, the egg roll, the sausage, and all these things, they are all dead foods because they have little or no nutrient at all. 
Then fried foods. I, I'm very sure most of us, are, are, we are very conversant with fried food. I want to advise us at this point in time to cut down on our intake of fried food. That is if you want to live long and you want to actually live long because fried food has caused a lot of disaster. In fact, it's responsible for high blood pressure, high blood cholesterol, and a whole lot of issues. It can generate to arthritis, body pains, and a whole lot of health issues. And you know, when I'm talking about fried, I'm talking about fried chicken, fried fish, even when you want to do your stew, fried stew, you want to do yam, fried yam, fried potatoes, fried egg, fried plantain, everything you just fried. So you have to try as much as possible to cut down. Even when you go out, you take potato chips, plantain chips, chinchin. If you want to live long, you need to really cut down on your intake of fried food so you don't die before your time. Are we, are we still following? Yes, sir. So time will be given for a question. We'll be definitely we'll, we'll be free to ask our questions. And then you can see uh, the, the illustration, the, the illustration to show uh, the fried food we are talking about. Now, the, there's a demar the demarcation between being alive or dead is, is your decision. You can either choose to be healthy or choose to be sick or to be unhealthy. It's all a matter of choice. You, so you can make the choice to eat healthy. It's just that we are too used to eating unhealthy food. Maybe due to, due to our brought up as a result of, the, of our family background, the kind of foods we eat. I mean, the kind of foods uh, we've grown up knowing. So, but nevertheless, you can still make up your mind to start eating healthy. So let us start seeing some of the pictures of dead foods. So you can see um, the ones I've been talking about. We have a um, burger, white chocolate, cookies, candies, butters, margarines, and the rest of, you know, some of us who want to eat bread, we must put bama and the rest, margarine, butter, all these things are actually cutting your life short. Fried foods, sausages. Now, these are also examples of dead foods. You can see, I know most of us here are conversing puff or popcorn. Some of you that still eat suya. I must tell you, even some of this uh, roasted chicken, the, some of this abuki cell, I must, you cannot guarantee the safety of it. Some of this chicken have actually stayed for one month and they will sell it to us. Sometimes that's why we experience food poisoning unknowingly. You start experiencing food poisoning because of some of this dead food we eat. Even some of the suya, you, you, some of these aboki men that sell suya, they can keep suya for one month and definitely they have to sell it out. So they keep on selling the old ones to ensure they sell it out. That is why sometimes when you eat some of this food, immediately you start poaching because they are dead food. So you are all conversant with this. And then the another, what we need to consider now, what are the dangers of dead foods? I'm, I'm sure you, you, we all know what dead food is all about now. We, we all know what dead food is all about. So premature death, heart diseases, cancer, metabolic diseases, overweight and obesity. We also have um, infertility. Like most of these cases of, like I, I can't count the number of people who have met me to say, oh, impotency. Sometimes menstrual pains, sometimes waist pain, sometimes fatigue, tired. You don't wake, sometimes even when you, to wake up from bed is, is difficult for you. You find it difficult to wake up. You walk a distance, you start feeling weak and tired. You just climb maybe a staircase and you're already feeling fatigue. You're already panting very heavily. It's as a result of most of these dead food. So infertility, a lot of people who are having issues of not able to put, uh, maybe give to bed, put to bed. Some of this dead food is the cost of it. Then it also affects memory and mental performance. It's very true. When you take a lot of dead food, you, you lack mental focus, you lack mental productivity, and you cannot even perform well because it is what you give into your body that your body can, can give out. They say garbage and garbage out. Yeah. 
So we talk, I, I, I explained uh, cost untraceable fatigue and weakness. It slows down your productivity. It causes frequent hunger test, frequent urination. Now, when you take more of dead food, you cannot get satisfied. You, you will want to take more of them. For instance, some of you who are fond of um, eating, uh, let's say, uh, uh, popcorn, popcorn, let's say popcorn, for instance, you can eat popcorn over and over again. You, it can. Mm. Feel, you can never feel your, you said, oh, excuse me you might have to repeat then, that uh, hello uh, yeah, hello you? mr yeah, victor you. you might need to repeat from that popcorn because we we lost the connection so please can you recall from the popcorn okay. so I, I i was explaining that uh, we need to be conscious of the death most of this death food we eat like for instance I explained that this dead food, they don't give you satisfaction at all. There's nobody that have eaten uh, maybe donuts or egg or meat pie that have been satisfied. But take for instance, when you eat swallow or maybe you eat rice and maybe maybe skinless chicken thereabouts, you feel full and okay. So for instance, if you take uh, some of this Coke Fanta, you can never get satisfied. They, they will always, you always have the craving to eat more and more of them and yet you are not still satisfied. Now that is the impact of death one. That is why, you know, we, we, we talk about diabetes as a result of insulin resistance. When your insulin is not able to regulate your blood sugar level anymore, because the, the sugar has bypassed, it has overpowered it. And you know, most of these issues, they are not issues that just happen now. You as you have been, you are eating this food over and over again, it is accumulating. You no, know, we have acute disease condition, and we also have chronic disease condition. Mm. The acute disease conditions are, are conditions like um, malaria, typhoid. Those ones you can just see them headache. What about issues like um, stroke, diabetes, high blood pressure, and the rest? They have been developing with time, and as a result of these dead foods we eat. So uh, I, I've talked about the last one. It's afraid the body system organs and negatively so some of the dangers of dead foods we can see we have cancer i have explained cancer heart obesity even apart from heart obesity people are having obesity now obesity is on the increase i can't count the number of people i have been managing over the over the over the short period of time people who are overweight what causes overweight is dead food eating some persons can, can consume a whole quantity of food just at a serving. And when they still go out, they will still buy some of these fizzy drinks, processed wines or juices, and which is also affecting them because most of those things have preservatives, like I explained earlier, they have chemicals. And then before you know, you start having issues of high blood pressure. So uh, uh, leg, uh, leg ulcer, heart obesity. We also have um, bleeding gums. When you take too much of sugary foods, fizzy things, it's, you start having teeth problem. Sometimes it all, it all results from this. Apart from the menstrual pain, some of us will, will be undergoing time to time, issues of impotency, infertility, issues of, of um, arthritis. Arthritis is also part of it. When you are feeling, always feeling new pains, waist pain, body pains, fatigue and the rest. So we also have morbid obesity, which is also part of the danger of dead food. So there are a lot of danger like we have been talking about them. Now, what are the health, healthy alternatives to dead foods? Please always go for fresh fruits and vegetables. When we're talking about fresh fruit and vegetables, we're talking about organic fruit and vegetables. Now, some of us will have come across certain apples they sell these days. And you notice this apple, when you cut it and leave it for a while, it starts turning to red. I don't, I don't know how many persons have, would have gotten that experience because of the chemicals. 
So it's good you always know the source of where you buy your food from. Go to organic stores where they sell organic foods. And I always try as much as possible when you want to snack, instead of taking pizza, shawarma, egg roll, donut, uh, chips, and the rest of them, please try to snack on cucumber. Try to snack on garden egg. You can maybe get almond or cashew nuts or pistachio. You can maybe get apple. You can go for English pear. These are things you can be snacking on and they can keep you full. Avocado is also there. Blueberries, strawberries are, is there. So these are something you can even do fruit salad. When we're talking about fruit salad, for instance, you can get apple, you can get watermelon, you can get uh, maybe orange, and just dice them come in combination. So you can snack on them. You can even put nuts in it if you want, maybe almond or pistachio or cashew nut, just maybe a handful of it there, thereabouts. So go for whole grains. When we're talking about whole grains, we're talking about foods that are rich in fibers. I know, um, for instance, local rice, instead of going for white rice, why don't you go for local rice, ofada rice, brown rice? You can also go for bogo. There's a rice called bogo rice. Maybe some of you that will need some of these things, you can contact me through your... Um, your um, uh, the, the leader, I will be able to help you out in getting some of them. Then uh, also uh, brown beans is also very good. Like I talk about brown rice, we also have brown beans. Um, we also have quinoa, we have burger rice, we have brown rice or father rice, we have local rice. And there are a whole lot of healthy options you can go for instead of white rice. White rice is very, very refined. It has maybe little or no nutrient at all. Just giving you calories. Yeah, you'll be adding up overweight and all those stuffs. So you can go for nuts and seed. Uh, examples of nuts. We have almond nuts. We have cashew nuts. We have, um, we have pistachio. We have uh, one nut. So these are some of the nuts you can snack on time to time. Even there's macadamia nuts. Some of you may not know it, but there are a whole lot of nuts. There's Brazil nuts. And they are, they are numerous and they have, they are rich in omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acid. can help to keep you full for a very long period of time. But I must consure you, when you are going for nut, please don't take more than one four cup. That is more like a close fist. Like this. Like this. Just a a hand fist. And it's not a handful, just a hand fist. The same thing applies to your swallow. You should also mind um, the swallow you take, take them in, in, in moderation. Just also a hand fist is also good to go so that you don't add weight unnecessarily. Even though we are talking about this healthy food, if you take, take too much of it too, it can mm -hmm. also cause problem. Go for lean meat like fish, coca fish, Skinless chicken, for more shrimps, browns, snails, periwinkle. You get even goat meat. You can take goat meat once in a while, but red meat, you need to cut down your intake of red meat. So maybe once in a week or maybe twice at most, since you still have other healthy options to exploit. Because some, some foods are very high in cholesterol and that can even cause heart issues. Go for legumes. Dairy product like Greek milk, like uh, Greek yogurt, go for skim milk, go for soya milk, and a whole lot of them. Because of scarcity of time, I may not be able to exploit this, but I I'm sure we are, we are really, really getting, um, you are, you are really getting what I'm trying to uh, pass across. So these are still healthy uh, options. What you are seeing there um, is the burger rice. The burger rice, the one at, um, the one at the top there, you are seeing burger rice and skinless chicken with spinach sauce. If you need burger, maybe you can let me know them. We also have um, unripe plantain swallow. Your kind of the swallow you take, please scrap out on healthy swallows because now, because of our age, age is not, we are not really young per se. So you should 
try to go for low carb swallows, like unripe plantain swallow, like oats swallow, like um, tiger nut swallow. You can even go for funio. There's one swallow they call asha, so, um, asha swallow, potato swallow, coconut swallow. You can go for cabbage swallow, cauliflower swallow, carrot swallow, and there are a whole lot of them. Instead of you just sticking to a bar, some of vita, uh, some of vita, pounded yam, apple, and the rest, those things are actually making you to add weight unnecessarily. So you need to take note of that. I am actually talking to you as a professional because I've been working for over five years. I'm a satisfied, I'm a satisfied healthcare professional. And if, even as I'm talking to you, I have people I'm managing, having most of these things. So you need to be accountable for your health and try as much as possible to be disciplined. It's not easy. Try as much as possible. These are some of the knots I'm talking about at our left-hand side. We are having a lot of knots. I didn't explain the seed. We have shell seed. We have flax seed. We have pumpkin seed. We get some, this, this seeds, we have watermelon seed. All these seeds are very healthy seed. You can take like maybe uh, one tablespoon of, of them per day or maybe one teaspoon per seven. Of course, you can see the veggies. All these are all healthier alternatives. Instead of a greasy soup, go for patronized vegetable mm. soup, okra soup, patronized bitter leaf soup, patronized. Um, we also have um, there's one soup yeah, we call a uh, for river or shoko soup. It's also very good. Bean soup is there. So cut down on your intake of fatty soup. I'm not saying they are bad, but just cut them, cut it down. So maybe once in a week, a greasy soup you can take it once in a week. Obono soup, you can take it once in a week because some of these soups are, can be very fatty. These are also part of the uh, healthier alternatives for dead foods. So, like I explained earlier on red plantain swallow, you need to replace all this bon vita. The bon vita you need to, you usually take bon vita, uh, chocolate, uh, milo, all those things are very, the, most of them are dead foods. So you need to, you need to cut, cut it down, cut it down. Go for healthier alternative like cocoa powder. Substitute your milu, your bon vita for cocoa powder. You get, that will really help you enough. That if you want to take tea, instead of taking the normal tea, why don't you get skin milk, like marvel skin milk or dano skin milk? maybe three tablespoons of dano skin milk, and then you can go for just a teaspoon of uh, the pure cocoa powder and you have make your tea. There's one other one I got recently called my choco. That, that is an organic tea too. That one too, you can go for that one. Then we have green tea. Green tea is also good skin milk. All these are all healthy alternatives. So let's check out like I said, there, because we have limited time, even if I like, I, even if I'm given 24 hours, we'll not be able to explore everything. But as time goes on, we can be having a routine time where I'll be coming, I'll be educating you when it comes to diabetes. What are the foods to eat? Foods to avoid when it comes to high blood cholesterol. What are the foods to eat and avoid when it comes to obesity? What are the kinds of foods to eat and avoid? And the kind of meal plans you can uh, work towards. So we have diabetes, we have hypertension, um, overweight, obesity. These are some of the common diseases related to dead foods. High blood cholesterol, arthritis, joint pain, liver and kidney diseases. And then what we should, cons what we should consider now, let us consider the 80-20 rule of food consumption. Now, I must tell you the truth. The reason why I'm bringing this to the table is because um, you, you, you cannot be perfect. Even if you are talking about healthy food, unhealthy food, dead food, and healthy foods, it's not possible that sometimes you will not eat cake. Somebody could be having a birthday and say, come, and definitely you have to eat cake. Sometimes you might be victim to eat maybe pizza or shawarma. Now, but you should bear this in mind. That's what we call the 80-20 rule. 
always know that you should eat 80% of nutritious food and 20% of indulgent food. That is maybe at some rare occasion, you take a shawarma or maybe egg roll or pizza, very rare occasion. But you should know because you are not God. Uh, even myself, there are times in which I fall victim. Maybe I'm very hungry and what is available is just maybe cook or though I'm still young per se, but I'm, that is not an excuse. But there are times in All right. This network should take its time. Yeah. Okay. I, I said to me that uh, time is fast spent. Maybe you should just round up so that we just. I wish I for short, yeah. I take okay. cook and sometimes I take Fanta just to help me out fast. If you don't eat breakfast, you need to that. Can you help me? Our time is fast spent to. So mm -hmm. because of the question, so maybe it's just round up so that people can ask questions. Unmute yourself, please. Okay. So, so I will try to. Okay. So I uh, let me let me start rounding up. Let me start running up so we can be able to ask our questions. Like I said, there are a whole lot of things to talk on, but how, how much food should the person eat? As we begin to round up, how much food should the person eat? It is dependent on your goal. The kind of, the amount of food you should eat is dependent on your goal. Whether you want to add weight or you want to lose weight or you want to maintain your current weight, are you pregnant? Are you breastfeeding or are you managing any health condition like diabetes, obesity, high blood cholesterol? So all this would all determine the, the kind of food and the quantity of food you should eat. But naturally, the dietitian or a satisfying nutritionist will be the one to help to plan out your meal for the week, for the month, and can also help you to sort out for the food to eat. You can see also this will determine the kind of quantity of food you should eat. Then, like I explained earlier, you can see also your swallow should just be more like a hand fist. You can see on the board, I mean, on the screen. Now, these are practical steps to eating healthy. Now, for protein, it should be just a palm size. It should not be more than 100 grams. Just one skinless chicken or a medium cut of your fish or one boiled egg per seven. But if you are doing scrambled egg, you can do maybe two scrambled egg with veggies, with veggies. Then when it comes to veggies, you can see when it comes to fats, if just one tablespoon per seven, well, that is for your olive oil. Of course, you should know by now, you should not be taking granite oil and all that unhealthy oil. You can go for olive oil. You can, me, I use power oil. I've not had any issue with that, but I use power oil. But if you can afford olive oil, it's a very reliable, healthy oil. Then for carb, like swallow for rice, it should not be more than a hand fist, just one cup, the seven. So eat only when you are hungry and stop eating when you are okay. Because some persons can be overeating, eating, eating until it is on their neck. That is when they will stop. Okay. No matter how you eat a food, you should try to control how you eat it. Reduce your food portion per eating. Eat fruit before meals. This is one of the problem people do. People eat fruit after meal. So learn to eat fruit before meal or 30 minutes after meal. Drink enough water. At least for men, it's expected you take 15.5 cups, or 15 and a half cups of water. Why women? Minimum of 2.7 liters, which is more like uh, 11, point, 11 and a half cup of water per day. Use smaller dishes or smaller plates to serve your meal. Because when you use large plates, you tend to eat more. When you use small plates, you tend to eat little. Sometimes go on the fast. It's not all the days you need to be eating, eating, eating. You can go on a fast. Maybe just you cannot eat by 12. Instead of you to uh, 
uh, all day, maybe from Monday to Sunday, you are eating, you can go for an intermittent fast. That can also help to burn out uh, calories. Fill up your plates with more of vegetables. Now, this is how your plate should look like. How sh your plate should look like. Half of your plate should be more of vegetables and fruit. Even your soup, that is why when it tells, tells people to eat a handful of swallow, they will be like, um, should I just take it to not do me? But I assure you, when you fill your plate with more of maybe vegetable soup, more of pomo is inside, one skinless chicken, I assure you, you'll be fed up. Vegetables fill up stomach, pomo, pomo will never add up your calorie level, it is neutral. You just have to fill your then maybe one medium cut of fish or one skinless chicken there about like maybe you want to go for shrimps or prawn depending on what you are going for. Then the other one, four parts will contain your carb. Then the other one, four parts will contain your proteins, your lean meat like your skinless chicken, your fish, your egg and, and, and others that you, you eat. Like we have shrimps, we have periwinkles and there about. So are you currently having any of these health challenges? We are running up already. I'll try to be very fast now. There's always a way out. Now, the way out of this is, if you are having any of these health conditions we have, talk, we have talked about, maybe diabetes, high blood cholesterol, hypertension, uh, obesity, overweight, over maybe big stomach, you can actually work your way out to a standard um, dietary management and a standard lifestyle management. Of which, obviously, a dietitian or a, a, a registered dietitian can guide you out. You need to work on a standard and adaptable meal plan. Then try to be checking yourself on a monthly. You need to have some of these equipment in your house where you check your blood sugar level, your blood. Me, I have it. I have all this equipment at home where I always check my blood sugar level, check my blood pressure. Then I also check my weight time to time to know whether I'm overweight or normal. Because the, in, the heart is the engine of the body. Once the heart stops working, you are, you are actually you are gone. So you must not live life anyhow. So start uh, some of these uh, organic foods. These are some of the way out. You need to start patronizing them. Then some, you need to do workouts. Go, you can sign up in the gym. Maybe if you want to register for iFitness, I can guide you on that or maybe any gym close to you. And then obviously, for, the, for some persons who will maybe have time, maybe you can, through your leader, you can get across to me, or maybe you can meet me, or you can chat me up. I can also help you out on some of these things. On if dietary prescriptions on foods to eat, food Thank you very much. It's already nine o'clock. Hmm. All right. Um, when you come back, I, I hope you can hear me. It's already nine o'clock. It's one hour program, but I will still give my people opportunity to, to ask questions. After uh, somebody uh, chat here, Somebody said she has a testimony about has a testimony about um, diet and exercise. It has really helped her sugar control. She used to be on drug, but not any longer. She used to be on drug because of her, her sugar to control her sugar level, but because of exercise and diet control, so she's okay now. So that's a good testimony for us. So that means we have to take all this teaching. Very, very important. You know, as amiable women of honor, we, we want to maximize our potentials. We don't want to die young. We want to be alive and well when the fruit of our labor will manifest. So, and the fact is that what we need to do, God will not come and do that for us. And that is the reason why they said that is why God gave us brain so that what you are expected to do, he will not come and do it for you. It is only when you get to your limits, you have done what you are supposed to do and you can't go further. That is when he comes in and prove himself mighty. But that which is expected of you, 
God will not do that for you. And that is the essence of this uh, teaching. So we have learned how to, you know, cut down on our meals. Uh, I'm expecting that I will come back. Uh, I, he was saying that uh, maybe you should eat red meat uh, maybe once in a week or things like that. What I got to do before was that red meat is bad. So I don't even eat red meat at all. So if he's telling us I, once in a while you can eat, I, I have questions for him. So I just trust God that he will come back. And I know others have questions as well. So uh, let's just give him some minutes to come back. So if you have your question, you can put it down so that at least it, that will help us coordinate properly. I have one of an me signifying she has question. That's the only person I have there, apart from the questions I, I have. So I wouldn't know, I'm not aware that any other person have question. So let's just give him some time to come back so that we can learn. From where? What? Who is that? It was I. I, I it was um, the thing was breaking. It was a uh, woman of an artist. Okay. Okay, you have questions. Your, your network, ma'am, is very. Uh -huh. My own network. Okay. No, not you. Woman I of an artist. She's talking now. Okay. Go I ahead. sent questions. Two questions. Yeah. On on uh, where? Okay. I sent two questions. This is your question. Where did you send it to? It hasn't delivered. Though. It does not deliver. We didn't see your question. Maybe your network. So you can resend it. No, open. I didn't send it to everybody. I sent it to only you. Yeah, it didn't even okay. deliver. It even to me, it didn't deliver. I'm looking at my chat now. The only chat I got from you is we are following you know, it as well. Ah, I have sent two questions. So. Although he has answered one okay. about fast, what are the advantages and disadvantages of fasting? And then all these uh, fruits that are in the market that they use fertilizer to do, that they are uh, uh, among us big, over big. Is it okay to buy them and eat? You see some cucumbers are looking like yam. Those are my two questions. Well, you know, um, um, convener, please try and call him on the phone or something. So I, okay. Abby, so I, at least we can do that while we're waiting for him. My own question, let him come and tell me the, the the because all the alternatives quiet all the alternatives that in nigeria i don't know about people in obodo but in nigeria they're also expensive yeah yeah they're, they're super expensive so all the alternatives they are okay some of us even know them you understand but then you will check the cost of of getting those those things of, Fresh um like chicken now. When you kill your chicken, of course it's healthier than if you go and buy frozen one. So if you buy frozen one at uh, maybe two thousand, you buy fresh one like four thousand plus. Hmm. You are saying we should snack on uh on apple. Apple is apple is one fifty for a small one, and then yeah, but you said it and you can now. Yeah. He said they can, so, you can snack cucumber. Well, we can't be restricted in, you know, you have to oh, be able to do Hello? You can't, you can't just be restricted. So like me now. When I eat cucumber, it's just a like miracle. I don't like the taste. Personally. Hello? I rather eat apple and not those other nice. Hello? hello? We are here. Can I answer some of those questions? Hello? Okay, ma. Okay, ma. Uh, okay, okay, no, 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 no. I think... He's talking about your indulgence when he mm -hmm. gives you that um um that's uh, one over four or something for indulgence. Yes. Once you indulge okay. yourself, some people like red meat. Okay, you get it. Yes. So that's uh, the portion for your indulgence once in a while. I told okay. you that I used to be on that. I used to be on um glucophage. Okay. But because mm. I value my health. 
I'm mm. no longer taking the glucophage, but I do a lot of fruits. The cucumber, you may not like it. Mm. Health is well. Yes. Yes. Mm. You get it. Yeah. Mm. Like she said, she doesn't like the cucumber. You don't have to I, like it. I don't like it initially myself, but I was forced to like yeah, it. You don't have to like it because uh, health. Your health is paramount. Even all these things that we are saying, even semo is expensive. Mm. Is it not expensive? 10 kg of semo is now 4,500. Yeah. Mm. You get it. Well, so, well, have you tried to make plantain amala? Excuse me. Yeah, Only you, 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 you eat 1,000 naira worth of it. Only you. You buy a red plantain, one cake. And you will not make more than two people's meal from it. Yeah. I'm just well, saying well, that. Well, well, Yes, ma'am. The truth of the matter is, he said, of course, there is room for indulgence because you of the do, economy. I do a but lot the truth of, of the matter. What is the essence of you keeping How much is the KG of holes? Hold on. I don't know, but what is the essence of you? Let's hear what the, the, the overall effect of it. If yes. you say um, a, a KG of oats is very expensive. Mm. Mommy, if you come to the hospital, you will see people that Definitely. have been amputated just because of right. diabetes. Right. Jesus. Right. So what's the cost? I agree. You see I people agree. that can't see because of diabetes. Mm. Because diabetes has taken away their highs. Sugar. Mm. What he's saying is that we should learn to, especially when you're over 40. Yeah, exactly. Thank God. <laughs> When you're over 40, please mm. cut down yes. on your glucose, uh, your yes. sugar. Mm. Cut down on the fat. Cut down on so many things and do a lot of fruits. Um, mm. yeah, garden egg is very good, ma. Yes, ma'am. And it is filling. Yeah, on the fruits, if I can interject you before uh, Mr. Victor takes over. If you can, if you cannot eat it, juice it. Just blend it and, yes. and juice it. Another way to take it. Yeah. Welcome back. There are so many questions for you. <laughs> Somebody's challenge. I'm sorry about that. No problem. We all understand our beloved country. God understand. We are, we are, we are in the question. We are, we are it's time to take question. Oh, that's what I'm saying. There are so many questions they have asked in your absence. The first, though uh, we have a, a, a registered nurse uh, among us, so she has helped in answering some of those questions. But you as a nutritionist, I wouldn't know what you want to say. Uh, for me, I don't even, we don't eat in my house, we don't even eat red meat at all. So, and it was like, because we learned red meat is, is no good. So, but at least you said once in a while, oh, we can, yeah. because me, I love some part of the red meat. So uh, you were saying once in a while, so, I think she explained to us that is the indulgence level you are talking about. And somebody is talking about um, some of the alternative you are talking about. Maybe you should not use that episode that at least it won't interrupt. So some of those alternatives you are giving us because of the economy of the of the country, uh, you are saying that it's expensive. Are there no other alternative that um, one can go for that is not too expensive? Then there is another question that some of those fruits that they are using fertilizer and all those chemicals to plant them. So they are not really, they are not really uh, coming out like the local one that our forefathers and our grandparents ate and they lived so long. So is it advisable? She, she gave an example that some, you go to the market, you see some cucumber as big as a, a, a yam tuba. So she wants to go ahead and buy something like that. Then I have another question here that you said we should do away with all um, all the eba fufu and all the rest. He said some of our grandparents had eba and fufu and they still live long. So why are you saying we should remove eba and fufu? Of course I know some of those grandparents eat apple very well and some of mm -hmm. them had eba and they still live long. So why should we uh, do away with uh, eba and fufu? So, okay, somebody said my grandma is close to 100. 100 live almost all her life in Lagos after wedding, thereby not having full access to fresh vegetable veggies like those in the village. And she has she has been eating what she what we eat now. Okay. And still live 
is still in this age. So um, what do you have to say to all that? Then another one, another one, okay? Somebody was giving an egg that the frozen food because they are cheaper. So though we are saying we should value our health, what is the essence of keeping the money, not spending the money on yourself? And now you now go to the hospital and start spending the money because of one ailment or the other. So I think it's better if you protect ourselves and stay away from the hospital rather than, you know, mm. so let's leave it to you. Let's, uh, as a professional, please do justice to it. Over to you, please. I didn't say let's keep the money. I'm saying sometimes no, some no, people no. can't afford I'm saying, it. I'm not saying you are they keeping the money. I'm afford, really afford, they can't afford those, uh, those ones they've mentioned. They should look no. for cheap ones. Maybe you should remove your earpiece and speak to the to the, your laptop. We can't hear you. We can't hear you at all. Remove the earpiece and speak directly, please. Speak directly to the system so that we can hear you. No voice at all. We are not hearing you. You are so, muted somewhat. Maybe. Yeah. Check your, we can't this, hear you at all. Check if you are muted or not. I'm not sure it's muted. Mm -hmm. We can no voice at all. Oh, and people are expecting. No mm -hmm. As well. Video. Video man, they go now. Nope. Nope. Just check the system. I think it's the system, not the earpiece. Mm. Check your system and check your speaker or something. Check your volume. Yeah. Mm -mm. Nope. Oh, so painful. <laughs> ah, it is not good. We can't. We, can. we are only reading you. your lips. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you can you log out and log in again? Whether we will hear you. Okay, you are muted now. Okay. No, oh, yeah. we just did it. Can you talk now? It's really, really talk. Oh, yes. Can you talk now if you can hear you? Try to talk now. Yes, I think you're back. Mr. Victor, talk to us. Are you trying to talk to us? I can't yes. hear you. <laughs> yeah, okay, we can hear you. Okay. So did you hear all my, all, all my question? So we are waiting for you to give us answers. Leave the episode. Speak directly to it. We can hear you. We can hear we you. Can hear you. Okay. Uh -huh. So can you hear me now? Yes. We can hear you. Okay. Please hear you. come again with the. Please come again with the question. Jesus, have mercy. <laughs> Governor, can you take the question one I by didn't... one? One by one. One by one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you, for me, I said for me, in my house we don't eat red meat at all because we are told it's bad. So, but while you are giving the lecture, you said maybe once a week, you can take red meat. You, are talking, you talked about the indulgence mm -hmm. level. So that's fall into that. So I just want you to confirm that, that once in a while, we can go for the red meat. Then um, there was another question that um, our forefathers, our grandparents, they ate apple, they ate eba. And they still live hundred and over hundred. So why are you saying we should not eat apple and eba now? And then uh, somebody said uh, the grandmother is now in Lagos, living in Lagos after the wedding, and she cannot go back to the village where she will get all those fresh air. So and she's eating what they are eating, and she's still healthy. So all this story you are talking about. Then I hope you are noting all the questions, though, so that I can answer them. Yes, I am. Once. Okay, so somebody is saying all those alternatives you are giving to us. It's not as if we don't know that all this uh, normal one are bad. It's not that we don't know, we know. But some people cannot afford all those alternatives you are giving to us. So what is the way out? Then the next one, somebody is saying, 
all those fruits, you said we should eat more fruit and vegetables. Some of the vegetables and the fruits we, we have in the market now are being planted with fertilizer and all those chemicals. So she gave example that when you get to the market, you see some cucumber that is as big as a yam tuba. So I used to say, mm -hmm. because you must eat fruit and vegetables, you still, when you know that this one is not naturally uh, whatever, we should still go for it because we must eat fruit and vegetables. So I think those are all, all the questions I can remember. Okay. Actually, okay, let me start uh, answering them from the one you asked. So um, we got into um, red meat. It, like I say, you can eat red meat once in a while. It wouldn't, at least so that you not deprive yourself of the iron. It has its region iron. And that iron can actually help to increase um, the numbers of red blood cells. And okay, at least you. can also help to boost in your, your, um, your, your blood count as well. So it's very, very, you can take it once in a while. As far as you are not having issue of blood cholesterol, you can take it. But the more options you should explore is more of uh, fish. Um, you can go. So you can also eat goat meat. Goat meat is is not bad. Um, you can alternate between goat meat, fish, coca fish, panda fish, snails. There's browns, there's shrimps, and the rest. So I think that answers your own question. So coming to okay, um, when well, you mentioned the fish now, let me quickly have this. You know, because of the economy, most most families you see them eating the fish like the normal titles that we know, uh, all this shower and all whatever. So what are the health benefits? Are they okay? Because you mentioned all the fish now, you didn't mention, but in average, oh, I'm not sure you will see people cooking titles, uh, could say and all the rest. What is the health benefit from all those ones? Okay, um, the the truth is that once it's fish, it's mm. good to go. Especially we have panda fish. You know, I mentioned I mentioned panda fish, tiger okay. fish, and okay. you, you are good to go. But a more a fish that is um, less in fat. Uh, more f when we're talking about fish that has less fat, okay, then you talk coca about coca fish, panda fish, right? Then uh, we, then the second question. She was asking regarding to um, organic foods that, um, okay, she was talking about swallows. That's most of these swallows. That, now, let me correct something. I didn't say they are bad. I just say that it's good you can cut down the intake of okay. it. If there are heavier alternatives, why don't you go for the heavier alternatives and save yourself of adverse effects? You get so um such like um you know I, in, in the introduction I explained that um such like fufu most of this fufu now they sell these days is being injected with detergent and um hypo they caught a woman recently in, the, in one of the western states I think was it Ugo State or Ibadona they were asking why are you putting uh, chemicals in this fufu she said that because it was, she wants it to ferment quick and to rise. That is what most of them do. And you'll bear me witness that most of these fufu that are very soft, it's as a result of this. Sometimes you eat a fufu and you start feeling hot, hot, hot bone, just from nowhere. So uh, for the fufu, if you can make it yourself or if you can see somebody that can do it, that is organic, you can also take it maybe once in a week. There's nothing bad. Like, it's a, you know, I, I just showed us recently on how our plates should look like. You understand? So you can take that once in a while. There are more healthy alternatives, like on right plantain swallow. It's actually very affordable. The oat swallow is also good to go. Yeah, you also have um, tiger nut swallow. We have, we have potato, potato swallow. We have coconut swallow. And okay. even cabbage, and they are very, very affordable as well. Very, very affordable. Some of them are 1,000, some of them are at most one eight, and you can eat them for one month because you are not making everything at once. I just showed us how our soil should look like. So that is it. Right. Then, then coming to the third question, yeah, you talked about okay. chemicalized food that 
organic and chemicalized like most of our parents those days in fact you you ask that most of our parents those days they eat stuff like eba they eat stuff like um pounded yam and the rest and they don't have issue of diabetes obesity overweight and the health issue are check it out most of them they are they have high activity level compared to most of us that do sedentary lifestyle. These foods, they are not bad. They are not bad. That is the truth. If you can eat them in moderation. But the truth is that most of us, we cannot. And you don't even have the time to burn it out through good Well, this network. Thank God for everything. Workouts. Most of them, after they, before they even try to the farm alone, they are born at farm. They start maybe doing some farm. Let's say if you want to feel like take five thousand calories, can you burn it? That is the problem. You know the eba is actually one. For instance, one cup of eba has over five hundred calories. Just one cup. Then, um, or a, 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 a stuff like um, Samovita. Sorry to inter Samovita. interrupt you, please. Sorry to interrupt you. What about uh, Amala? Yamfla. Amala is, is that? Amala is, um, okay. Um, the Amala that is much preferable is the unripe plantain Amala. The unripe plantain flour. Flour. Yeah, the yam is actually starchy. It's starchy. It's the same thing like when you are eating pounded yam. Just mm -hmm. that this time around, you have, you have, um, it's, it's more processed and refined. You get. So uh, in, in naturally, these foods, they are not bad. No food God has made this, but except some foods that have chemicals, preservatives, and some of these stuffs that I explained earlier. But the issue we have is that we don't have the discipline to eat in moderation. So because mm. we don't have that discipline, why don't we go for low-carb swallows? That you know that, oh, if I'm taking this, at least I'll, I, I will not have adverse effects. I don't know. So that is this. Then on the issue of our parents, they mostly eat a bar. Some of them eat uh, fufu. Some of them eat pounded jam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they have high activity level. Right. They go to farm. They trek to farm. Exactly. They do. They do hard work, and mm -hmm. before you know, they are born at everything. But we, we, we can't. We are going to the office. You are in your car. It's you get to the office. You are your, you are your system. You get home. Okay. You are um, tired. Because of our time, you were about answering the question on the chemicalized the fruits and vegetables. So, can you? Okay, so on, so on the issue of the, the chemicalized food, now, the, the truth is that most people want to make money. They don't care about your well being at all. Mm -hmm. uh, for some of us who stay in Lagos, you, you will know of um, many oil these days that have been mixed. Most of the palm oil you buy, they have been mixed with certain red substances. That's why you see most palm oil are very, very water. And some of you would have tested if you put certain palm oil in the pot to start foaming. You have gotten that experience before. And then, if it comes to this, you need to know the source of your food. Mm. You need to know the source of your food. And you should always get food from organic stores. Because you cannot, you cannot accept it. People want to make money. I just explained to us how they preserve certain chicken, frozen food with formalin, the same chemical used in preserving dead people in the mortuary. In the same way, they use certain preservatives and chemicals to preserve most of this food. And they will still tell you that it's good. So you are the one that you are accountable to know where you buy your food from. So that is it. So is there any other question? All right, even if there are questions, maybe at another time we'll bring you again. So you come and tell us more. But for today, because we are almost 30 minutes uh, above the normal time. So on behalf of Amibu Women of Honor, I want to say thank you for coming, Mr. Victor. 
God bless you. This will be the first time we are bringing a man uh, to right. talk to us on this program. So you'll be the first man on this program. So we appreciate you. Thank wow, you for wow, all wow. the efforts. God bless you. We appreciate you. So don't worry. I will still maybe next month we'll talk. Uh, if they want me to bring you back, then we'll, we'll, we'll do that. We arrange that. So God bless you. Thank you very much for coming. We appreciate you for your time, all the effort you have put in. I pray the Lord will reward you in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. So I'm able, women of honor, we have just two minutes. Um, by the grace of God, our Thanksgiving, of course, and by the grace of God, next Sunday will be the first Sunday in the um, second half of the year, 2021. And of course, the first Sunday of the month. And of course, our thanksgiving for what God did for us yesterday, for those of us that were there and those who are watching online. You know, I don't know how much we can pay for what God has done for us. Personally, God gave me a testimony of a mother that I've been witnessing to for all years. And by the reason of what God did, the move of God yesterday. God started it yesterday and perfected it today. So I don't know how much I can pay him for that. So, but I've told God next Sunday is dedicated for Thanksgiving and, you know, to start the, the second half and to appreciate him for what he has done for us and in anticipation for what he will do in September as well. So, um, but before we go, just one minute, for adventure, there's anything you want to talk to God about that uh, even before this second half, the first half will come to an end, you are still trusting God to do in your life. I want you to quickly talk to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. So I want take home from this today's teaching is that we need to be accountable for our health and we must be disciplined. And he said, we should eat moderately and you need to know the source of where you are getting your food from. Please be inquisitive. When you go to buy, ask question, you know, just use time. You know, people will not want to come out for you, but at least with the wisdom of God, you don't know. The Holy Spirit might just come upon them and they will just download anything, everything for you. And you say, wow, wow, this is what I've been hitting. So that is just it. Pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Um, let's share. The, I want to thank everyone for coming and even for staying this long. The Lord bless you. Replenish your post where you are taking the money for the data in the name of Jesus. And all our Facebook audience, the Lord bless you. Bless your home in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, our Father, we want to thank you tonight. We give you all the praise and all the glory. We appreciate you for your faithfulness upon our lives as individuals, as a family, even as a noble woman of honor. We thank you for the move of your power concerning yesterday's program, despite all what the devil did. We thank you because you still prove yourself as a mighty God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We, you are the only one that is worthy of all the praise. So we give it back to you. And Lord, we pray our testimony that we have received in the program shall be permanent and it shall be evident for the world to see that people will follow mm -hmm. us to serve our God the next in, in the next edition in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Lord, Thank we pray as this uh, first half is remaining a few days to come to an end. We declare this month is not permitted to come to an end, except it has delivered everything it has in it, every good thing it has in it for us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, wonderful mm -hmm. Father. We give Thank you all you. the praise. We give you all the glory. And as we will be coming to praise your name next Sunday, Father, we will pray you will accept us as a sacrifice of worship unto you and everything we have come to worship you with in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mm -hmm. wonderful Father. In Thank Jesus' you. mighty name, we are praying. The team mm -hmm. of our praise next Sunday will be let everything that has bread praise the Lord. You know, it's not everybody that has been given that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Some breasts, people's breath have been taken away and they are no more. For you and I have life and for all he has done for us. So next by the grace of God, we'll be here to praise him and the Lord will lead us and guide us in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace of fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Lord, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ.
<laughs> Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. Yes, and we shall join in the afternoon. God with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. I appreciate you, my regards to your family, your husband, your children, and Mr. Victor. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. See you. I love you. Stay blessed. Bye. 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 Mm.